God. But when you love, you know God all the way. a great God. I said we serve a great God. How many believe we serve a great God? Shout with me, we serve a great God.
Somebody say, once, once the enemies come upon us and it starts, and it's going to be too late to cry. It's going to be because God said, no, you kept putting on these fluffy guys on. Better watch who you're watching. Oh, yeah. Well, somebody say amen. Uh, and God said, you keep on putting up the wrong people. You keep financing the wrong people. How many know we need some people to finance the truth to get the truth out there before there's destruction? Somebody say, man, we're killing ourselves. And here it is. This, sets, this is the word of the Lord in Jeremiah. Go to Jeremiah 22 and verse 29. I'm almost done and I'm going to set this up in verse 6. Am I all right, am I all right Ed? What's it say? Oh, oh earth, yeah. earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Amen. If you want to summarize the whole book of Jeremiah, there it is. The whole earth was full 
of other gods. And they couldn't hear God. So God said, I'm going to try prophets for their hearing and see if that will turn them. And then he said, I'll create a prophet in his mother's womb. And I'll put my word in his heart and in his mouth. 1, 10, 6 through 10. And I'll even put it in his bones that when he tries to resist it, it'll consume him like a fire. And my word will be so deep inside of him that when he begins to speak it, I'll not only try to reach the earth with my word, but I'm going to try to reach him with a picture of a face. And if my pain can't move them, then they're too far gone. The only recourse is to destroy them. But aren't you glad that God doesn't want to destroy you? He wants to... Nobody's having church with me. Go to Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 6. Everybody say, He doesn't want to destroy us. He wants to restore us. Woo! And I will bring health and a cure. Woo! <laughs> Woo! And I will cure them. <laughs> and I'll reveal to them the abundance of peace and truth. Boy, if you ever had a reason to shout, there it is right there. God doesn't want a man to destroy. He wants to restore. Oh, for all the pending judgment that is about to descend on this nation, if we will take heed to that call, call unto me. If we take heed to that call, God said, I will bring health. Now pay attention. Can you give me a few more minutes? Why do they need a health and a cure? Say this or write this down. Serving other gods will make you spiritually sick. Serving other gods will make you spiritually sick. So in Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 4, he tells them, tell them to circumcise themselves and cut the foreskin of their hearts. He said they have something in their heart that needs to be cut away because that's what's making them sick. <laughs> Do you know how many people have mental problems and are on psychotropic drugs in our nation now? From 1944, when that whole association of men, amen, tried to, because they weren't recognized as real doctors before that. And they created their own association. And they started telling people, you need some kind of medication. But some people have mental problems because you can't serve two masters. Matthew 6 and 24. Somebody say amen. Come on, somebody. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. James 1 and 8. Are you in the house with me? You see, so some people are suffering mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Some people's bodies are reflecting, amen, the turmoil that's going on in their soul. Some people's minds are reflecting, come on somebody, the confusion that's going on in their spirit. And we can't get people's minds right until we get their hearts right. 
And we should be more concerned about a person's spiritual condition than even their own physical health. Somebody say amen. A blind man can get to heaven. You can will your way into heaven in a, in a wheelchair. Somebody say amen. You can get to heaven with leukemia. Somebody say amen. You can get to heaven with any kind of the 30,000 diseases that they have diagnosed men with. But you can't get to heaven unless your sins are forgiven. Everybody say, you need a cure. A health and a cure. And I'm going to set this up. Tell your neighbor, don't you miss next week? He said, I'll reveal unto you the abundance of peace and truth. This word health is mentioned four times in this book. In Jeremiah 8 and 15, they look for peace. No good came. And interesting, perfect for our time and for a time of health. And behold, trouble. Boy, aren't we looking for a time of health? Hmm? And, and, and so God, remember from Jeremiah chapter 30 to Jeremiah chapter 33 is the book inside the book of consolation and comfort. So when he says in Jeremiah chapter 8 and 22, is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? He said, I know that we have physical ointments. And I know there are physicians he said, but show me the physician that can heal or bring health to the daughter of my people. Why is not then the health of the daughter of my people recovered? He said, oh, I know there's physicians here, but fix her sin problem. I know you got doctors and you got pills, but fix her real problem. Somebody say amen. See, I didn't make that up. Our real problem is not physical. Our real problem is spiritual. Now, as I close, go back to Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 6. That word cure. Can I get, can I get somebody help me? Come here, Pastor John and Eugene. Matter of fact, I need four people. Pastor John, Eugene, Tina, and Laney. Come here, hold that. Pastor John said, I want to be with my wife. I don't want to be with Eugene. That word cure is linen bandages to dress wounds. Everybody say linen bandages to dress wounds. So the key thought in that verse is God will bring a cure by peace and truth. To the wounded. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Peace and truth are those spiritual things that could not be contained in vows, that could not be figured out in apothecaries. Are you having church with me? These are things that are made in God's lab. Somebody say amen. amen. When a person gets the peace of God that passes all understanding in their heart and in their mind, that's a cure. Oh, somebody say amen. And truth, beloved, is not, it is not an adjective describing something. Truth is a noun describing someone. And how do I know that as I close? Because this sets up the tone. These are the bandages that God wants to wrap up all of our wounds with. Do you know why we're acting out in this country the way we are? 
You know why people are burning things and people are buying guns and people want to shoot one another? You know why people are arguing whether the, the Confederate flag, the, the flag of the Ghost Riders? From 1863 to 1915, the Griffin's birth of a nation to the black, from the black coast to the birth of a nation, the Ghost Riders carrying the Confederate flag, the Ghost Riders representing the dead rebels who died in the war. That's where the Klan came from. I just described them for you. That was their, that was their purpose. But listen, listen. Why? That's all they knew. They are, they are motivated by the same hurt. I didn't say it was right. But it hurts. It hurt them to lose their cities, their crops, their sugar cane. Somebody say amen. It hurt them. It hurt them. That's all they knew. Somebody say amen. amen. They're driven by hurt. And then they, when you hurt, hurt people, hurt people. Right. Somebody say amen. amen. So they perpetrated that hurt on another group of people. But then that group of people, because they were minorities, they couldn't perpetrate that hurt on anybody else. So guess what they did? They perpetrated that hurt on each other. Ain't nobody having church with me now. Yeah, some of you feeling me in here now. So what's going on in this country? We got a whole lot of hurt people that need, amen, to be wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in Jesus. Woo! Larry, come here. Are you hurt? Are you hurt? Yeah. Somebody yeah. say, wrap him up. Yeah. Don't beat him up. Yeah. <laughs> wrap him up. Yeah. Yeah. Tina, are you hurt? Yeah. Somebody say, wrap her up. Yeah. Don't beat her up. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. 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 Stand to your feet. You make sure you come back next week now. We're going to take you to the Good Samaritan. Wrap them up. Don't beat them up. In Jesus' name. Tell somebody it's going to be the best week you ever had. This word and the Holy Spirit moving at this church brought me to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ in 2010. And I was baptized right here at Living Word Congregational Church in 2011. I was lost in need of salvation. Are you? I am so grateful for my Heavenly Father for sending His Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. Would you like to accept His gift of freedom from your sin? If you want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, pray this prayer after me. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. I believe Jesus Christ is your son. I believe he died for my sins and that you raised him to life. I would like to invite him to take control of my heart and to take control of my life from this day forward. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
As a prayer-driven church hungry for God's presence and vocal about God's word, our desire is to spread the message of salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. We trust that you have gotten a taste of our ministry today. The exciting opportunity to broadcast unwavering, biblically-based truth from our church to around the world has been made possible only because of faithful, consistent giving, generosity, and support of those in our congregation, our online membership, and viewers like you. We invite you to partner with us to further our unrelenting vision for salvation for the laws. Won't you join us in Operation Revival, revival in God's kingdom through prayer, being vocal about God's word through support of this broadcast, and living out your devotion to Jesus in his word. Great. 